What's going on guys? Sean here coming at y'all with a video. I uh, want to go ahead and go over the loss to the Falcons and the win over the Saints because I haven't put out a video in a while so this is probably going to be long. Um, I will try to remember to put a timestamp in here to split things up but I'm probably just going to bounce back and forth anyway. So just lock in. Let's listen to everything I got to say. All right. First things first, please like, please subscribe. I appreciate you guys so much for coming back uh, weeks without videos and y'all still come back and support me, um, supporting me on Twitter, uh, supporting me everywhere across all platforms. I mean, you guys, uh, it's just unbelievable uh, what some of you guys have done for me, coming back and commenting, liking, sharing, everything, dude. I really, really appreciate it. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Um, so like I said, we're gonna get started with a little bit of talk about the loss to Atlanta. Um, and then we're going to talk about the Saints and about how the defense took it personally, you know, the way things ended last year and what they came out and did versus the Saints and how really, really impressive it was. I mean, I, we'll get into it. I can't get ahead of myself. So first things first. All right. The loss to the Falcons. Um, now, obviously, it's been a little while at this point. I don't remember all the details. I'll tell you what I do remember. I remember Jalen Hurts organ orchestrating a game-winning drive. You know what I mean? Going down the field and getting points on the board. Uh, basically sealing the fact that we should have been 2-0. and And then the defense absolutely collapsed. It looked like Jim Schwartz prevent defense that gave up third and long, fourth and long so many times. I mean, it was just so unbelievably annoying. Um, you know, that was a game that was ugly from the start. Lots of mistakes across the board. No pressure from our edge, guys. Interior D-line didn't look good. Um, you know, corners, safeties, linebackers, you know, people can say what they want about everybody. You know, Dean might give up a play. Bond might give up a play. Everything north of our D-line has been fantastic uh, for three weeks now. All right, let's jump ahead a little bit. Three weeks now. You know, our secondary and our, D, you know, linebackers, I, yeah, yeah, everybody has given up some plays. Everybody, it is the NFL. But we have looked fantastic from that point on. Um, and that's really what cost us in that game was the edge pressure, the, the lack of edge pressure. Um, I feel like Josh Sweat is starting to show himself more and more. Um, he definitely still looks like a premier pass rusher, definitely not elite, especially with 17 on, ick. Um, but Nolan Smith has been invisible. Uh, um, Bryce Huff has been invisible. Uh, Brandon Graham got one sack and then it got taken away by a penalty. What a surprise. Um, you know, we need help. We need Jalex Hunt on the field right now because there's no way he's worse than what we're showing right now. Um, we need to really think about a Hassan Reddick trade. You know, get him back here. Just give them back what they gave us. Call it a day. Give Hassan a pay raise because we have the money on the cap and bring him back. Um, you know, I think Hassan Reddick, if he's on our team in that Falcons game, we win that game. I think inevitably he is the guy who gets the pressure and the sack when we need it most on that last drive of the game. That is why you keep Hassan Reddick on this team. Talk about run defense all you want. Talk about this all you want. Our run defense has been atrocious as it's been. Okay, uh, tightened up a bit in the Saints game, but still not great. 26 carries for like 87 yards, but it's Alvin Kamara. So considering what he's done the past couple weeks, I'll take that, but still not good. You know, still really not good. We're still averaging like five yards a carry probably, you know, or something around there. Um, I'd have to look that up. So just a really disappointing loss to the Falcons. You know, obviously down A.J. Brown, you know, I, but still, you know, you got to get it done. We didn't run the ball enough. Uh, Saquon was criminally underused, you know, and then, uh, you know, the drop on the last drive, you know, I get people were mad, but, you know, Jalen Hurts did everything right on that drive. I mean, I just, I don't understand the hate for Jalen Hurts, you know, and it's been bountiful lately, you know, everybody coming out of the woodwork to talk shit about him when in reality, yeah, he's had some turnovers. He's had a couple plays that you wish he could have back, but I mean, He's doing everything right. I mean, his legs in that Falcon game, you know, he was our offense for a while. Um, so with that being said, bounce ahead to the Saints game. The defense took it all personally. They came out in this Saints game 
And every time I thought the game was over, they found a way to come up with a stop. Every time I thought we were done, the defense figured something out. Um, it, it's the polar opposite of what it's been forever. You know, all through last year and even the first two weeks of this season, it's felt the same. You're seeing a lot of things that are giving you uh, flashbacks to last year, and it's just not good. Under new coordinators, you should not be seeing these same things, um, especially with the way everybody talks about Vic Fangio and Kellen Moore. Um, you know, it's just unacceptable. So for them to come out in this game, I mean, they made Derek Carr look like, like, I mean, like he did his last year in Oakland, I want to say. I don't even know. I've never seen Derek Carr look that bad. I've seen him throw interceptions, make bad decisions, but he still gets yards. He still pushes the ball down the field. He could not push the ball down the field. He had Olave on Dean at one point. Uh, he got Olave on a quick out at one point or a quick in or something. I can't remember exactly. A couple really nice targets to Olave though. Um, you know, great touchdown to Olave where he put air on it and CJ just never had a chance. You know, Olave was in perfect position. Um, but you didn't see Carr doing what he normally does, and that's impressive. That is that is absolutely our secondary. Quinion Mitchell, Darius Slay, um, you know, whoever's rotating in the slot, mostly been Maddox at this point, although Maddox has been up and down. Um, you know, it's just, it was really, really impressive what they did against the Saints, and it was not what I expected out of this game. I expected high scoring. Um, I expected Dotson to have an impact. I expected Jalen to have to throw multiple touchdowns to win this game. Um, you know, it just, I, I could not say enough good things about our defense. And the edge pressure was not great in this game either, but I saw guys. Now, I will say, whoever's lined up against the right tackle, because it hasn't been swept most of the time, has not looked good. Um, now, I will say, I'm pretty sure the Saints have a pretty good right tackle, so that could be part of it, but... You know, they it just, it has not looked good. Um, you know, it's been really, really bad uh, on that second edge rusher position. And I feel like we have one edge rusher right now, and that's Josh Sweat. And I love Brandon Graham, but I just don't think Brandon Graham is capable of carrying the workload anymore. You just can't, you can't keep asking him that. Um, last year, he looked great because he played about 50%. Um, and that's where he's going to shine. I know Vic Fangio is, oh, there's no farewell tour, blah, 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 blah. I love BG. He has, what, one double-digit sack season? He's never been that guy. When he was dominant against the run and he was putting up pressures, that was one thing. But, you know, he's just getting older. He's getting older and he should be a fourth guy. And it's really a shame that he has to be a number two right now. And it's going to make him look bad in his final season because he's in a position that he shouldn't be in. Um, Bryce Huff should be in jail for robbery. No tackles, no sacks, no nothing. I mean, it's like the guy hasn't even been on the field. I think I, I saw something. I could be wrong, but I think he had less than 20 snaps in this game. I don't I, I just don't understand how. Um, you know, him and Nolan Smith have just been utter disappointments. And honestly, if we traded both of them right now for one good pass rusher, I wouldn't be mad about it. And I know that's ridiculous. You should give guys time to develop. And uh, Bryce Huff was an undrafted guy, and he's slowly working his way up. And now he's a full-time guy, and he's learning. No excuse. No excuse. When you make $17 million a year, there are no excuses. Uh, that money... That money could be well spent in a lot of other places. Um, it's still very concerning. But with that being said, the rest of our defense is finding a way to hold it together. They're finding a way to make stops. Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis were madmen in this game. I think Jordan Davis fell off a little after his sack, but he was still, still very, very uh, aggressive in the middle of the line. You know, and you just can't be mad at it. You can't be mad at it. Jordan Davis finally looks like he's taking that step we've been waiting for. Um, he still looks tired. I still would like to see a little bit more Milton Williams. I still would like to see uh, a little bit more of some of our other D tackles. Um, you know, there's been a few guys that have stuck out that it just seems like aren't getting playing time and it's kind of confusing. 
Um, I have no idea why we let Patrick Johnson go. I feel like with what he did in the preseason, now would be the perfect time to be able to elevate someone like him off the practice squad to see what they can do in a game because, you know, we have nobody else. You know, we have nobody else right now. Um, it's just, I guess the one thing that really makes it frustrating and not a lot of people are talking about is that we're going to have to use resources before the trade deadline um, to go out and get someone else. And then you look at the landscape of the NFL right now, you know, no matter who we go get, it's Robert Quinn again. And I don't mean in production. I mean, in it's going to be a one-year rental. It's probably going to be expensive. It's going to mess up our cap for next year and the following year because we're not going to get the rollover that we should. And then you push Nolan Smith and Jalex Hunt and uh, Bryce Huff further down the depth chart, um, you know, which doesn't help, you know, at this point. But you just, you can't develop pass rushers like that on a team that's looking to win. We don't have the time to sit here and wait for them to develop. You know, it, it just, it, it baffles me. It really, really baffles me. You know, the fact that uh, uh, Zach Bond's got like two or three sacks and then who else has more than one? You know, off the top of my head, I can't think of any one edge rusher that has more than one sack right now. Maybe I'm wrong, probably. But that's just how it feels watching the games right now. Um, the hit on Smitty was bullshit. I just want to come out and say, as usual, the Saints are a bunch of bitches. Nothing has changed. Uh, they're still out here headhunting like it's 2008. Uh, you know, this is absolutely ridiculous, you know. And, of course, no flag. Smitty gets his fucking head taken off and... You know, everyone just standing around watching, you know, like it's completely legal. They don't want to blow the whistle for some fucking reason. Um, there was a lot of things in this game that were just ugly. Uh, made me really, really mad. Um, you know, and I just hope we see better things moving forward, you know. Um, with that being said, there's not too much else I want to talk about. Uh, quit the Jalen Hurts slander for a little while. I've been upset with a few things that he's done, but overall... I mean, he's putting up yards. He's making plays. He looks like he's poised in the pocket. That third and 16 to Dallas Goddard was money. That is Kellen Moore all the way. But the fact that Jalen Hurts is now looking like someone who's reading defenses, who's understanding things better. The blitz pickups have been great. I mean, not perfect, but they've been great. We've given up some sacks. We lost the whole right side of our line. From center to right tackle was three brand new guys, okay? three brand new guys playing positions they didn't play last year, you know, um, or in forever for Fred Johnson. I don't, I don't think Fred Johnson's had meaningful snaps in, uh, years at this point. And he came out and looked decent. Um, which is, which is amazing because we are far from the days of Jack Driscoll coming in and getting smoked off the right side of the line. Um, we are far from the days of not having any depth on the O-line. I mean, I was worried at the beginning of this year, but after this game, Tyler Steen, the way he played, um, Fred Johnson, the way he played, I feel a lot better. I, I feel so much better. I think that Fred especially could come out next week and play a full game. Um, do I want him starting all season over Lane Johnson? Absolutely not. But Fred Johnson showed me something yesterday. He showed me heart, tenacity, how much he really wants this team to win, how much he really wants to help this team win. Uh, putting his body on the line, you know, sacrificing his health for a win, you know, it's just, it, he was playing with heart yesterday. If you didn't notice him, there's a reason why. He didn't do much bad. Um, he didn't give you a reason to notice him in a bad way. Um, that long Saquon run, he was emotional and he, he deserves it. He deserves every bit of the emotion he's feeling. I hope he feels a great sense of pride because he has come a long way to get where he is today. Um, he has Stoutland to thank for that, Howie Roseman for being willing to bring him in, you know, and give him, give Stoutland a chance to develop him into something real, which he is now. Um, you know, it's just amazing to see. And once again, Stoutland University, never a doubt, never a doubt. Um, I know I said this video was over, but now we're getting, we're getting to the offense and I'm starting to think about it. And man, why is Saquon Barkley not getting 25, 30 targets or carries a game? Uh, it's kind of baffling to me. Um, you would think Saquon would be averaging 20 plus carries. I, I mean, he's every time he gets 
15, 20 carries. He's averaging like eight to 10 yards a carry. I, I've just, I've never seen a running back that looked so dominant. Even with backup O linemen, he still came in and busted off like a 60 yard run. I mean, it's just, it's nasty. Saquon is going to be our saving grace this year. Uh, I think we should just remove the read option unless you just want to hand it to Saquon every time. Um, because Jalen's decision-making on the read option hasn't seemed great. Maybe there's a little bit of miscommunication between him and the team or him and the coaches. Maybe there's something that we're not seeing as fans. But I want Saquon to get the ball 30 times a game. Him not having a carry in the first quarter made me, like, nauseous, nauseous. Because it reminded me of Doug Peterson, you know. Uh, it reminded me of coaches of past where you get a new player and then you give them no opportunities. Um, you know, Golden Tate, he wasn't perfect as an Eagle. He also didn't get targets on a team where he was clearly the best option. Now, he went to New York after that, and then he fell off, injuries, blah, blah, blah. He was still our best wide receiver when he was on our team. He was with Nelson Aguilar, and he was with nobodies, you know. Uh, Alshon had already fallen way off at that point, you know, like, it just, it was not the same team, um, you know, and we just didn't use him. We didn't use him right. Um, you know, I felt that way about a, a lot of the running backs that we've had last year with Swift. I felt like we didn't use Swift at all. Why? You know, uh, he was a thousand yard back and we barely used him. And now he's going to rot away in Chicago, you know, which is really a shame because, you know, I don't want to be greedy or anything, but I feel like we could have had both. We could have had him and Saquon, you know, with the deal he got in Chicago, I feel like, you know, leave Bryce Huff in New York and bring in DeAndre Swift and you know because Kenneth Gainwell's not it I mean you know he had one opportunity in the passing game yesterday and he blew it he had one decent run maybe you know I oh his pass blocking you know I think that's what I said before oh he's still a good pass blocker he's gonna be your best your second back Ugh. I'll take it all back I think Cam Jurgens has been underrated this year. I think he had some jitters in his first game. Um, I think Cam Jurgens has been great. Um, definitely a breath of fresh air. I think Landon Dickerson has been amazing. Jordan Mulata has looked amazing. Um, he looks like he's taken another step in the passing game. His pass sets. Um, you know, I feel like every once in a while last year, Jordan Mulata would get beat, and it never really made sense because it's like, what are you doing out there? You know, it almost looked like he was still a little lost here and there. Um, and that's been the last couple of years. Guy never played football. You know, we drafted him, built him up, and turned him as, into what he is today. So, you know, he has all the raw talent in the world, but now he's slowly starting to gain that experience, you know, the time in the NFL. And it's just, it's amazing to watch. I mean, anybody when Jordan Mulata was drafted that said he was going to be the starting left tackle six years later or, what, you know, four years yeah, 2018 draft. Anyone that said he was going to be the starting left tackle, tackle six years later paid well for what he does because of what he does. I mean, he's the ultimate teammate. He's always there to pick up Saquon or Jalen or Devontae, whoever's on the ground. He's always there to pick them up. Um, you know, he's, he's like the best human being on the team, hands down. I, I just, I don't know these guys from a hole in the wall, but you just feel that Every time you see him on the screen, every time you see him in pregame, you know, talking up the O-linemen, anytime you see him talking to Jalen or the press, I mean, like, you just cannot hate this guy, and he just keeps getting better. Um, you know, it's amazing. It, it really is amazing. Dallas Goddard had a breakout game. I've been wondering where Dallas Goddard is for two and a half, three years now. I, I mean... He'll have one game like this, and then he'll disappear. This is Dallas Goddard. This is a guy that we have had on our team since 2018 as well, I want to say. It just, you know, it makes me wonder what we're doing. All these different offensive coordinators, and Dallas Goddard is still so criminally underutilized. I mean, he drops some stuff here and there. That's it. Like, that's his only negative. It's once in a blue moon, he'll, he'll drop a pass. That it's like, ah, oh, come on, man. 
But if you throw it to him triple covered, or you throw it to him on third and 16, and yes, the scheme of the passing play is why he was so wide open, you still got to execute. You still got to go out there and execute, and that's exactly what he did. You know, like 170 yards from a tight end? This is, this is, you know, what he's always been, you know, and it, it has aggravated me a long time that we refuse to use him, and it is such a shame that it took AJ going down and Smitty going down, you know, and not wanting to run the ball and just forcing Jalen to throw it 40 times a game, which I still don't like, even though Jalen had a great game minus two plays, took a couple sacks, whatever. Jalen looked great. Overall, he made the right decisions. His ball placement was good. You know, it's just, it's a shame that it took this long to get Dallas Goddard involved. <sighs> All right, guys. With that being said, I'm going to quit rambling. Anybody that made it this far in the video, I feel like you have to give me a thumbs up at this point just to show me you made it this far in the video. Uh, once again, I love you guys. Thank you so much for all your support. Um, I'll probably be back with you guys in the next couple days. I'm starting a new job. Um, so I'm not really sure what my schedule is going to look like yet. But you know me. As soon as I can make decent content, I'll be back. I love you guys. Thanks again so much. Fly, Eagles, fly. Two and one. Oh, and Dallas still sucks. Have a wonderful day.